at 7.50 p.m. Still taste the sweetness of your lips The way you lick my fingertips While I blow your cigarette Oh, it's just this feeling deep inside I can't get you off my mind Will you stay? Thank you.
Mark, and it's time to start our live show. And uh, so tonight's show is sponsored by Secrets of Clean Animation Reveal 3. And if you guys are interested in making armature, sculpting, foam latex animation, and uh, just learning in general how to make a stop motion film, um, check it out on Amazon or stopmotionstore.com. And so let me get rid of the screen. And all right, so. Uh, so tonight's show is a continuation of what we were doing, I guess, uh, last week. So last week what we did was we created some uh, some hair for two and a half D characters. Uh, actually, it's just one character, but there's multiple sides to him, uh, at least two. And then with uh, other characters, of course, you guys probably recall. Move this over here. And... Huh, okay. So uh, let me show you guys what we've done before. So uh, tonight what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something similar to what we've done with this character, which is to uh, to create some uh, some clothing. And so where are her clothes? Here they are. Now it's kind of like this. And these are all gonna be replacement parts and so this one's for a walk cycle, so different uh, different lower parts. And this one is sideways, but we've got a, a front part where we got like a squash and stretch. And so we've got this current character who is, uh, he's a secondary puppet, and we don't really need to have a lot of different replacement uh, faces and stuff, just a few. And at least one body, uh, which is front facing. And so the, the goal for tonight is to create some, well, this might actually be pretty close, but uh, we've got to make a shirt for him. And we've also got to make some pants and this belt. And so the colors need to match. And let me see what I've got over here. So uh, hopefully you guys are having a good week. I know Christmas is right around the corner. And uh, so everybody's been pretty busy. <laughs> I've been super busy just trying to get uh, a rush sculpting job done and, of course, trying to get gifts for people and things like that. Um, I did see Star Wars. Uh, let's see, when did I see that? That was on uh, the weekend. You can see here. Got one of my tickets. And um, but I don't want to... I don't want to give anything away. Hint, hint, Janet, don't give anything away. <laughs> no spoilers, because a lot of people still haven't seen it. Um, but I liked it somewhat. I, I wasn't a huge fan of uh, a lot of what they did. I like a more serious film. And, you know, it's kind of... I threw a lot of comedy in there from the get-go. I don't want to... I don't want to make a mistake and give anything away, so... Okay, so anyways, um, where's my clay? So I've got some red clay, and I think that this particular shirt, I'm gonna make a, a fresh batch of color for his shirt because I think there's some purple in here, which we're gonna add in, let's see. I've got some purple puppet putty. But, this Van Aken is a bit darker of a purple. I actually want like a dark blue. Maybe I should go with this. So this and some brown. And I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this a teeny tiny little batch, which is to take just a small piece of clay 
mix the three colors together and just see how close these come to what I want. Roll it in my fingers, squish it and fold it. So anyway, um, I know I've been making a lot of these videos, making different faces and bodies and stuff for a while. It's been actually a year since we first started working on this project. And I should probably let my cat out. One second, everybody. Anyways, uh, I guess it's going to take a while longer. How many more puppets do we need to make? Hmm. Guess probably around five. <laughs> but the good news is those puppets don't need to have a lot of detail and stuff and multiple replacement faces like the, the mother character that we created. So uh, it's going to be a bit faster of a process. But I'm thinking it's going to be about another maybe a year until we can complete this. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Janet, I mean, there's a lot of people that uh, are discussing it on the internet. I think when episode seven came out it was another you know people either loved it or hated it kind of a thing i don't really want to say too much about it but uh, <laughs> there's a there's a video of mark hamill it's like it's like mark hamill doesn't like the Last Jedi or something along those lines and they put some sad music and all of his f crazy facial expressions you know so there's there's people who say that even Mark Hamill is not wasn't really happy with how it went and I know he said that <clears throat> and you know I don't know I mean I'm at the point where I don't know if I should take that Star Wars film, you know, the latest one really serious uh, or even any of them serious because you know, it's just really hard to recreate the original trilogy or to re recreate the appeal of the original trilogy, I guess I should say. I mean, the original trilogy people enjoyed for the fact that you know, it was something unique and new and uh, you know, different directors, of course, directed each of the films. So, you know, each one had a different feel to it. I think Empire Strikes Back was probably the, the best one, and then Rogue One is, was pretty close. You know, so I, I personally like the more serious tone Star Wars films. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, you know, the more ma mature, thought-provoking stuff as opposed to things that draw you out of the illusion that it's real. So, for example, when you're, you're watching it and they throw in a bunch of comedy or put in things that are just really ridiculous and it's meant to make you laugh, um, you know, back to back with the scene that's serious and it kind of takes you, pulls you out of it. So I kind of like the serious one. So, so Rogue One was really good, I thought. Okay, now I think the color combination I just used to make this shirt color is really close. So I know the colors I'm going to use to make the larger batch of clay for his shirt. And I'm going to use some 
So I'm going to cut a nice big chunk of brown here. Throw in a little bit of this purple. A little bit of this. Purple and violet. And some red. About that much. And I know I'll be kind of in the ballpark to this one. <laughs> I'm hoping, anyways. This is not very scientific. You know, I'm just going to use my eyeball and get this as close as I can to the, the sketch. But this is pretty much. What making your own colors is like, as you guys have seen me do on, on previous episodes. So I'm going to just kind of squish this together. Make sure that my pasta roller on the side is at least kind of clean. And the last thing I rolled through there was brown for the hair. So <laughs> it should be, you know, this is brown also, so it shouldn't be a problem. There's the first roll, kind of get it flat. And so, like I said in previous shows, this is kind of like how the Japanese used to make swords. There's a multiplier effect to folding your clay over multiple times. It's a really fast way to mix up colors. So I'm just gonna kind of fold these around and together and um, flatten this out and use the pasta roller. But yeah, you know, filmmaking is a tricky thing. Trying to get a film made to begin with is hard. And then trying to make a film which has mass appeal. Um, sometimes, you know, if, if the mass appeal of a, a film is what you're aiming for and that's the only sole purpose of making a film for shareholders for example uh, you, you're less likely to take risks you're not going to have something that's original and unique and I mean that's not really like a hundred percent true you know but people that are writers that have been writing in, in Hollywood for decades are just going to be like, okay, here's the plan. You know, we're, we know that this film with this story made a lot of money and people liked this kind of action and this kind of hero and this kind of, you know, villain. And so we're going to do that in this film, you know, the next film. And um, it will make a lot of money. And so... You know, personally, I, I think making a un unique film is is better. You know, something that is never been seen before is is different. But then again, so many films in history have been made that it's kind of hard to even do that. I mean, everybody that makes a story has based it on another story, for the most part. Uh, and that's kind of why, you know, you'll see a lot of story writers, the ones that are really good will tell you if, you, if you write stories, write stories based on things that have happened to you, to you in your life. So that at least your experience, um, you know, is something that you can base your writing on and not other writing, <laughs> if that makes sense. I think like a film like Coraline was was really unique in a lot of ways. I mean, not a hundred percent, but you know, like um, the writer Neil Neil Gaiman Gaiman. I always say his name wrong. Name wrong. <clears throat> he uh, it's kind of like Alice in Wonderland in some respects. And Henry Selick tends to make films in stop motion where somebody goes through a tunnel into a different portal or dimension, sort of like. Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, um, what is that, Bob in the Lower Dimension, or what, Strange, Strange Bob, or 
I can't even remember now. It's been so many years. So, I think we're getting pretty close. So I'm going to add some more red to this color here. So this here is my indispensable tool. It's a, an icing, a cake icing sort of spatula. So if you want to buy these on Amazon, I guess it would be just icing spatula is maybe the technical term for these things. So if you do a search for something like, you know, clay cutter or something like that, you know, you'd never you would never find this. All right, so we got our red. Just going to throw some on there. I'm not going to put it all. I think that might be too much, so Yeah, I mean, Star Wars really, it's, I mean, it's not going to please everybody. I think the director didn't really do a great job on, on the latest one. Um, but I think that the acting was great. I think Luke and Rey and Kylo Ren as characters were pretty solid. I think their acting ability and their ability to emotionally get into their work you know to cry on cue or to have a sort of intense feeling that comes through you know on the screen is actually pretty amazing that they can do that so well Of course, Finn too. You know, all the he was a good actor. He's a good actor, and I'm not really sure about his part. I thought some of the scenes with him were not not super necessary, you know. But all right, so we're getting pretty close here to this color. It needs to be just a tad bit darker, so I'm going to add just a little more purple to this. Maybe just a tad more red. And then we can sculpt his body. All right, so that's purple, and this I believe is violet. <laughs> Sometimes I get the two confused. All right, so I'm gonna darken it with this. Oof. Hey, Don, what's going on? Welcome. Hopefully you're, you're feeling better there. Yep, using the pasta maker. <laughs> Do you recognize the sound it makes? <laughs> And I guess seeing flat clay kind of gives it away too, but. Yeah, Janet. Well, they've reused that line in a few, few of them. Um, I guess Empire, Jed the Return of the Jedi. Ben Kenobi's like, that boy is our last hope. And Yoda says, no, there is another. There is another Skywalker. All right, so a few more times to the pasta roller. This should be good. 
Oh, that's good. That's good, Don. Hopefully they don't need to like cut you open and all that stuff that you were talking about. Or if they do, at least you're feeling good. Yeah, I told that to Janet. I'm not actually talking about spoilers. Just talking in general. <laughs> Oh, really? Wow, a dollar? That's awesome. Never used? Man. Okay, I think I got this color down pat now. So, uh, last thing I'm going to do is just mix up my little sample piece into the larger batch. And... We're done. Ah, okay, Don. Well, hopefully, you know, I'm sure that will go well. Science these days is kind of astounding what they can do. <laughs> yeah that is weird Oops. Okay. all right so now to sculpting the body here kind of make a ball squish it out This puppet's got somewhat of a pot belly, so I want to make sure that I accent that a bit. Give him some detail so he's not just a ball. So I think um, I think Don said that he's getting some more puppet putty pigments, some sort of new pigments for making puppet putty. So that should be pretty interesting to see what comes of that. Which, by the way, Don, I think we're almost sold out of puppet putty. We have like two more packs left so people really seem to like it which is nice so fox and disney buying each other out well I don't know, pretty soon I think it's going to all be owned by one company eventually. That's just the way it's going, you know. If you look at if you look at entertainment companies, uh Fox is Sorry about that. My son is telling me he's hungry, so. So tell him to make a sandwich. Um, so Don is saying that figuring out the color mixes made a 
gross plum color the other day. Maybe you can make a, a Leonard Lima bean out of that. <laughs> you know, Le Leonard Lima bean is one of my favorite characters in uh, that came out of Will Vinton Studios. One of my favorites. bit of a bulge for his belly here. Yeah, I wonder if Kyle Bell were st you know hadn't passed away if he were still alive. What he would be creating today. I, mean, I just kind of wonder about that. It always kind of bums me out when you know a really great artists pass away. And they have all this potential, and they're amazing artists, and and they just kind of live to create. And then when they're gone, you wonder what you're kind of missing out on. And he's one person I, I never met the guy. I just talked to him on the phone many years back, but I, you know, the time that I talked to him, he was always really generous and. Trying to explain things to me, and, then <clears throat> and he's kind of unknown. Like nobody really talks about about him anymore. He just kind of faded into obscurity when he passed away. And I always tried to figure out if I could like find his family and have them like give his artwork to somebody to scan for a website or a gallery or you know a Facebook fan page or something like that just to you know share his his work and inspire people like he inspired me and, and um, did I say Kyle Bell? I said Gary Bialki I thought did I say Kyle Bell <laughs> no Kyle Bell is still alive is that who I said oh man I gotta watch this later on and Listen to my mistake. Gary Bialki was the guy's name. He, uh, I think he might have designed Leonard Lima Bean. I'm not sure if it was him or Peter Montgomery. One of the two. Oh, so uh, Don says that purple and magenta are really easy to get confused with each other. If they aren't side by side, it's sometimes hard to tell which you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Kyle Bell is still alive. Hopefully, uh, and start just start a rumor. Everybody might be like, "Oh no, let me call him up." <laughs> Maybe he'll get some phone calls. Are you okay? But Gary Bialki passed away one. How many years ago? It's been like, uh, oof, probably, man, I want to say seven, seven years maybe, seven or eight years ago. Yeah, I think I saw Kyle Bell on some pictures that Kevin McLean, uh, I think he posted pictures. Uh, it was Will Vinton's birthday party. <laughs> and uh, so he posted a bunch of pictures. And Kyle Bell was alive, so. <laughs> I 
All right, so here's a little close up for you guys. You can see the body shape. It's really simple. And I'm just gonna kind of even things out. I might add some more clay around here. Gonna give him a little bit of like man boobs here because he's chubby. there it's got a little bit more shape now now that the rough shape is kind of in place I think I'll smooth it see if that's enough oil on my fingers or not I need to add more oil so I'm gonna use some uh, mineral oil for smoothing put it in here which is my paper towel on the container like that and periodically you want to kind of just clean your fingers a clean paper towel if you pick stuff up a lot of times dust gets on things and then you transfer it to your sculpture so just kind of keep that in mind if you're making your own stuff and so I'm going to dip my finger in here and if there's too much oil on your finger you can kind of you know, rub it around, get it to where it's just about right, and then transfer that oil to your sculpture and smooth it up. So, yes, I'm kind of deleting the details and the tool marks and everything else, and that's what I want to do so that when I add the tool marks back in, they're more deliberate in, in places that I want them to be as opposed to sort of just being randomly everywhere. Let's see here. Hey, you know, Janet, uh, my sister's birthday is coming up in January. And, you know, my dad is part Polish. Or actually, he's, I think he might be 100% Polish. And so he, he knows this woman in a Polish restaurant. And he said that we're all invited to go to this restaurant for my sister's birthday party. And um, she's going to make all kinds of traditional Polish foods and desserts so it should be kind of fun <clears throat> and since my mom passed away I guess you know a few years ago uh, you know this woman is seems to like my dad so <laughs> there's kind of a joke within our family that my dad and this lady are gonna like get together or something It's really cool, Don. So you got to actually go to the party. That's awesome. I'd love to meet some of those people. I mean, I, I know I've met them in the past, a lot of them, but I still haven't met Teresa Drilling. Um, who else? Joan Gratz. I mean, she's a, like a legend, you know. I mean, she's probably the one of the few people in the world to use clay to paint with and animate with. All right, so I think this body is pretty good here. Let me put the face on top and the hair. So obviously this stuff does not line up properly. Uh, so for those who are just watching for the first time or you're not really sure what I'm doing, there's going to be layers of glass in front of the camera. And so all of these things will be sort of stacked on top of each other and lined up, kind of like how you see me moving the hair around. So I'll line all these up properly and it will look a little bit better. Now, hopefully the hair won't look too big like this on his head. <laughs> so when I actually put this on the animation table, I may have to uh, resize the hair, maybe make the body a little bit larger. You know, I don't really know. So, you know, this stuff is not really set in stone and clay is easy to fix. 
and change. But, uh, let's see. So before I move on, I think what I'll do is I'm going to add some more details back into this clay. So as I said before, when I, I used my finger to smooth out all the details, I removed every you know tool mark on here. And this looks really simple and, and basic. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of maybe add a line here. Maybe a couple of lines, maybe around here. Hmm. Go like this. So you can see, you know, it's a really simple thing to do. But I don't want it to be too simple. So I had some lines, simply. That makes a lot of sense. All right, anyway. Um, so he's got this like little pattern that goes on the side. Uh, so I'm gonna go over here. And over here. Hmm, let's see. Gotta move this line a bit. Somewhere around this kind of angle. That's pretty good. So I can just add details with the same colored clay, but I'm gonna darken this a little piece of it slightly to give it some differentiation between the two colors some contrast. Yeah, that's going to be her birthday in January. I'm kind of looking forward to it, you know. It's going to be kind of like just our family, uh, all of us together getting together and uh, eating Polish food and we haven't really sat together as a family just for Polish food since my grandma had passed away when I was about 15 years old so it'll bring back some memories I'm sure I mean when my mom was still alive she did cook a Polish dish for my dad so I can't really you know I can't really say that we never sat down for an entire Polish meal but with desserts and everything, you know, we haven't done that. So it's, it's going to be kind of neat. Even though, uh, you know, I was only 15 when my grandma passed, I still remember her, you know. Kind of remember how much. <laughs> um, and this is kind of funny because my grandmother was always like, you need to eat, you need to eat, you need to eat. And she used to make a ton of food, you know. And um, when my dad goes to this Polish restaurant, the lady that... Uh, <laughs> that owns the restaurant she's you know like 100 percent polish and she according to my father is very much like that she's like you need to eat you need to eat so i don't know if that's a polish thing or what i don't know if that's a common sort of uh attitude towards food i guess uh <laughs> see here so uh that is the color of purple that i would call dark purple oh you know i think this color purple um hmm this was custom made but i can't remember why i made this color it might have been for the, the raisins but look at this this is actually your puppet putty don this is your puppet putty and this is the Van Aken, so it's it's pretty similar. Just a slight shade lighter, I think. Whatever pigments you were using to make that. So you might, you know, if you want to make a raisin, that would be pretty close to the right one to use. Let's see. So I'm not happy with this thing here. I'm going to add some red to this now.
I don't know what I'm calling this particular, maybe a bandolier. I don't know what this really is that I put on him here, but it needs to be a different shade. And one that is appealing to the eye. So I'm just gonna add in some red. This might look really horrible when I'm done. Sometimes it's hit or miss with colors. Yeah. Oh, really? Is this the same one that you've got? <laughs> That's cool. We got this at a, uh, where was it? Um, Bass Pro Shop. It was really expensive, something like $60 on sale for $17. And when I saw it, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cheap. I don't normally like to buy clothes, but I thought, well, I'm going to buy that. Okay, so we got two different shades of color here. This is just slightly different. Not by much, but I think it's better to have a little bit of contrast, so... Gonna start making these little sort of pill shapes and putting them along here. Is it fuzzier? <laughs> so uh, Janet says, all grandma give a lot of food to grandchildren, but we love good food. Yeah. That's true, yeah, it's, it is kind of a grandma thing, right? <laughs> So I'm making a snake and I'm going to try to make it somewhat uniform in diameter just so I can have uniformity when I stick them on his jacket. And I'm going to measure these as well. Get this about the right size, just a little bit thinner. Doesn't need to be perfect, but close. I take my little dividers, go on here and start marking these and cutting them. So these are really basic techniques, but if you want to make a complicated puppet, no matter how complicated it might seem, it's just a lot of simple techniques like this that you just do a lot of them, you know? So sculpting hair, which seems complicated. Um, if you can do it in a small way, you can do it in a complicated way. You know, simple and complicated. So, let's make sure that I didn't just... I hope I made enough. You know, Don, maybe that dark pur purple was Adelon. Not sure. I did buy some, but I can't. I can't recall. No, I'm not sure if that was. I think I've got some dark purple Avalon in my box in the garage. So I'm gonna stick these on. It almost looks like he's got little shotgun shells. <laughs> All right. 
that. I think we're just gonna make it. Look at that. Just enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press these on. Sure that they're kind of the word, the right size because some of them are a little bit wider. Seems like. Okay. That should be pretty good. just add this little short stubby one to the bottom. Just kind of curve these a bit so it looks like it's going somewhat sideways and okay. It's made up cool. There it is. Just gonna kind of accent this here a bit. Hmm. Okay. I saw on TV that American people eat a lot of fast food or cheap, not healthy food. Is this true? Yes, it is. It's very true. <laughs> Some people, that's all they eat is McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and all that kind of stuff. I mean, some of it's not so horribly bad for you. Like Kentucky Fried Chicken is somewhat good for you. Um, but there's a lot of restaurants out there to choose from. Where I live in Springfield, Missouri, they have more restaurants per capita than I think anywhere in the world or the United States, I think. I read somewhere, so there's a lot to choose from. I mean, you would think New York would be the spot for the most diverse restaurant uh, uh, chains and things like that, but franchises. Okay. I'm contemplating like putting some sort of a black ribbon along here or something. a little bit of black to this that ribbon as well um yeah uh avalon's colors are not bright at all here's some other yellow and this is your puppet putty <laughs> you can see much more vivid and here is van aiken's yellow it has a, almost like a green tinge to it sometimes. Their colors aren't super consistent. That's one of the bad parts about Van Aken is their colors never quite match. And I'm not really sure how they did things on Mark Twain, but if it was mostly Avalon or did they use a lot of Van Aken, I can't really recall. But if it was Van Aken, I know for you know, like the, the flesh colored especially is from batch to batch is always way different from one batch to the next. 
And I guess they don't really need to be, be super, bleh, super precise, but you know, for animation purposes, it's really not nice. Oh yeah, I mean Van Aken clay is if you buy um, or look at an older pack of any color and then get a newer pack of the same color, you'll see that there's a difference. I think it's hard to just to get it right, you know, like to get the same pigments and the same suppliers and all that kind of stuff. I think that they must have different uh you know, seasons or something in the art world because a lot of the pigments come from natural plants and stuff. So I don't know if it's possible to, to get a consistent sort of supplier of colors and stuff. I mean, it's all magic to me. I don't know. <laughs> When it comes to chemistry and, and science, uh, although I understand a lot about that, you know, how, how they can, <clears throat> like I think with cyanide, they use like cyanide for, uh, for blue. It's like a process where you mix certain things with cyanide and water and it makes uh, the same stuff that they used in blueprints in the 19, you know, early 1900s and all of that. <laughs> it's asking me if I should if I should show Janet's message. Well, it's not bad or anything. I don't know why it's saying that. Right, there you go. Um, can get pretty close, but pigments are subject to shortages in supplies and demand. Okay, so I just made this sort of darker color here. It's like a reddish, brownish, muddy color, but I want it to resemble what I've got going on in the design, which is a darker coloration. So I don't know if I can really pull this off, but we're gonna try. I'm gonna make two thin ribbons. That kind of helps, doesn't it? I do the same to the other side. Ah, okay, so cyan, that's right. Cyanide and cyan. And lead equals cadmium yellow. Ah, is it lead? Yeah, that's interesting. I know uranium, I think, has also got hints of yellow in there as well, doesn't it? I think, like, lead is the... Am I wrong? It's like the oxide from the uranium. I know the two are kind of, like... If you find one in a hole somewhere, you can usually find the other. <laughs> and you don't really want to find either, I guess. At least you don't want to get... You don't want to eat lead, and you don't want to really get turned into a radioactive monster. Come out of uh, the woods or wherever you find it, like a uh, B-movies, a B-movie uh, monster or something here there we go okay so we got somewhat of a bandolier going on here which has the darker colors and all right there we go 
Now my fingers are kind of messed up. I've got a lot of the pigment on my fingers, so I'm gonna clean my fingers off a bit here. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use some of the lighter color for the arms. And you can use alcohol, you can use more mineral oil, you can use soap and water, you can use baby wipes. I'll just use some alcohol. And what it does is just melts the clay a bit, chemically melts it, so you can wipe it off your fingers easy, more easily. Okay, so what's next? So we got the arms to do, which are really super simple. <laughs> Keep in mind, uh, I know I mentioned this before, but he's gonna have black eyes like in our design, but we've made the mold of the two face shapes, which we will cast, I guess next week I'll be casting some of those. Uh, so we can get some of these facial shapes. And these arms are really simple, so I'm just gonna make the arm shape and then cut this in half <clears throat> to get that straight edge where the hand goes. Oh, it's white paint that has lead in it. Ah, okay. But I know nowadays you can't sell paints with lead. At least not house paints. You can't like paint your walls or any of that kind of stuff. So I wonder what they have in there. I know that there's a titanium white when it comes to oil paints. So maybe they're using, is it titanium? Cadmium, well, maybe it's cadmium. <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe it's, uh, or maybe zinc or something like that. I mean, let's see here how this looks. Okay, so these are probably too short. And I'm kind of wondering what I'm gonna do when I put these on the glass. Will I have the arms behind the body? like that, I guess I probably would, because this guy's belly is so large. So let's uh, let's make some longer arms here. I think that would be a more funny way to make him stand there, like his arms are kind of back behind his body, and he's pushing his belly out. Yeah, you know, Janet, uh, my wife will eat that um, skin from a pig. It's called chicharron or chicharron. What they do is they take the pig skin and they fry it up. And when it fries, it turns into something like a potato chip. <laughs> it's really just, you know, I, I think it's disgusting myself, but that's what some countries do. And my wife's from the Philippines, and so that's one of the things that they would they would eat. It's a really famous thing. Uh, they even have like a a thing where they take pig's blood and put it in a like a Jello mold, and it kind of congeals. And I don't know, it's some crazy stuff. But poor countries will do things like that. You know, it's just they learn to survive. So what seems weird to us is completely normal to a lot of other people. <laughs> yes, a global paint conspiracy. Ah, pork rinds. There you go. Yep. Do you sell those, Don, where do you work, perhaps? They sell them in potato chip bags, too, which is the really funny thing. 
I don't care for that and things like uh, like beef jerky I find really disgusting maybe it tastes good but just the idea of it is like ooh, some kind of heavily salted very tough meat that could be years old <laughs> like sitting on a shelf for three years but it looks brand new Oh, yeah, there's a lot of stories like that, Janet. I don't know. Maybe. All right, so I think I'm going to go with the longer arms like this. So when I have this on the glass, I can put it behind his body, and then I can kind of move it out. I'm going to match this one. Make them somewhat even. And for the cuffs, I'm going to use the different color that I made as well. I still have some of this clay left, so in order to give it some contrast, uh, it's hard for you guys to see, but there's like a cuff at the bottom of his arm, which is slightly different in color. Okay, I'm going to cut this, make it nice and straight. Same here. <clears throat> So the arms are a bit fat. I don't want them that fat. Just kind of flatten them out a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just a story. I don't think that's true. Yeah, there's a lot of legends and crazy stuff out there regarding Star Wars. and I think if you haven't heard it from George Lucas or seen him in an interview talking about something like that, that's probably not true. So for the cuffs, I'm going to make this nice and flat. Oh, yeah, bal balutes. Ooh, that is gross. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you guys can look that up on Google or YouTube. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be surprised what that is. Okay, so I think this is good now. Yeah, this is good. Got a little cuff here. And I'll do the same on the other side. This, oops. All right. It's gonna be hard to keep track of all this extra clay I've got, but um, here's the body. The head. The arms will be behind the body on the glass. And my hands off. 
off a little bit. And so we've got his pants to make, his lower body. What time is it? Well, it's already past nine. Ah, I can't believe it. it's already been an hour. See, if I could just sit here for eight hours, I'd have all this done. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really, it's a weird thing to eat. Balutes. Or is it balot? I think it's balot with an O, isn't it? I might be wrong. At least that's how my wife pronounces it. Yes, you can get it in Asian stores, believe it or not. It's, it's sold in America. Okay, well, anyways, I guess that uh, we've got the whole body, you know, the upper body done in the arms, and the lower body won't take much time to do next week. Um, I appreciate you guys coming in. If you guys want to leave any comments and subscribe and all that stuff, that would be great. And I guess I'll see you all next week. See you later.